Yo, what's good? Welcome back to the Between Two Stoners. I'm your host, Matthew Craig, and with me, we've got Hurstfield's favourite own, right here on AU Dollars, the first time, chilling it. How we doing, Yes, brother? I can't lose my first time. I'm good, man. I'm good. It's, it's been, been a minute. Really it's been a minute. I remember the first time I came across your rats, bro. It would have been like 2016, 2017. Yeah. Uh, I remember you, you and Tala were supporting Ooze back in the day, and Junior, yeah, Junior was just like, bro, you got to check out Chill. Shout out Junior, by the way. Shout out the bro. Uh, how does it feel now? Well, that's like seven years later, we come back yeah. here, you're a father now, national tours, no longer the support act. Do you get time to pinch yourself and just go, fuck man, it's been a big Yeah, game. well like, it's it's kind of like a good, you gotta find a good balance. Like you've gotta continuously be looking forward to the next thing. So like, I'm always trying to think like, doesn't matter if I'm doing the best, there's better to do. Mm. But at the same time, I smell the roses all the time. Yeah, like that's to it. go from doing support acts to like five or 10 people to like, you know, thousand minimum in every state yeah. international shows you know merch line like i'm wearing right now like uh, jackets yeah. which are coming out you know we got our and in for bongs right for there real. as well like we're branching out into all different directions energy dna getting into fitness Let's as well go. for the kids like um yeah man like i'm basically trying to start entrepreneurism as well as like the rap as well so mm-hmm. over the past seven years i've basically become a businessman and learn how to basically run this business and yeah, run yeah. this music and in the music industry which is mm-hmm. what it is yeah what i like about that as well is like you have this stereotypical picture of stoners. Yeah, they yeah. stay at home, they smoke weed all day, smoke bogs, play video games, don't work. But then look at Snoop Dogg, look at Cheech and Chong, like businessmen yourself, you know what I mean? Yeah. How do you find a balance between the two, bro? Well, that's the thing is like, I think that it's like you said, it's a stereotype. So people that smoke weed, and now this is the thing as well, this is addressing to everyone. Weed isn't necessarily for you. It's just kind of like some people can drink caffeine. Mm-hmm. Some people have a shit tolerance to caffeine. Some people drink milk. Some people have to drink lactose free milk. It's the same with marijuana. Some people are gonna smoke it and go, wow, this really gives me a benefit. Some people are gonna go, fuck, this makes me anxious, it's not my thing. Mm. Until you try, until you buy, you don't know, you know what I mean? So I think that like, as a businessman for me, I, it doesn't affect me in a way, but also as a father now, I've pulled back on how much I smoke because I like to be present in certain mm. moments, in the precious moments, in the early hours of the morning and that. So I'd wake up in the old days and it was a Billy first thing, but yeah. now, you know, I have a few hours of my day where it's dedicated to my son and my wife, mm. then I, um. Uh, go into 420 mode or whatever yep. you'd call it, go into chilling it mode and uh, yeah, then I'll do my thing after that. Fatherhood, let's talk about that for a minute. Yeah, it's the best. How's Fuck it changed you, bro? Oh, it's the best, it's changed my life. It's changed my perspective on life. It's changed like what I want out of life. Um, and just my son's like my favorite person in the world. Like it just changes you. Like you think you know love or people say to you all the time, kids will change this and kids will change that. And then you have one and you've got your little person and it's like, yeah. I can't, I can't find really a word yet. I'll let you know when I find the word to describe yeah, it, man. It's, um, it's the best. How's, um, how's being the dad changed tour life? It's made, it, it's made it difficult. So for the first two tours, so we went to Perth. And so coming from Brisbane to Perth, because I've moved from Sydney to Brisbane, and so I'm, I'm now located in Brisbane, from moving from there to Perth with my son, mm. the time difference was really on his body clock, just not worth it. So coming here, my mother came up, look, was looking after my son now. So it's a bit weird leaving him yeah. like you know i'm asking for videos every 10 minutes kind yeah. of thing, checking in, going, mom where's he at so uh yeah man i'm a pretty like involved dad so like i like to yeah keep my eye like a hawk on him so it's a bit weird not having him around but it's also good to know that he's in the comfort of his home with my grand with my mother his grandmother yeah. so but you got your beautiful partner here just made the trip with him. yeah she's always here supporting me my partner's the mvp yeah she's kind of like the rock to kind of what i'm doing and i think that i've learned that like from you look at the growth of women weed and wordplay and where i was with that i was kind of like being completely frank, I was just, bro, I didn't give a fuck. I was mm. just fucking whatever and doing whatever. Like it really, I, yeah, I didn't give a fuck was just generally the best way to put it. And then meeting my partner and having a family just gave me a perspective into what really matters in life. And it just, it, it just was like a switch. Mm. It just flipped and the next thing you know, everything was different. So like, it, it's a blessing, man. So it's changed and it's difficult, but in, like everything in life, the difficult things are worth it. So mm. fucking, you know what I mean? You go through those struggles and you come out the side and now like, yeah, I've got a good balance. I'm a proud dad and I'm running the business. We're launching more and yep. man, the sky's the limit. No, the stars are the limit, bro. Yeah, so if you fall short, you hit the sky. That's real, you know that's real. Evolution's a beautiful thing. That's eh? it, bro, that's it. Talk about that evolution. Women, we were play on the family ties. Now the new project. What can we expect that's different? What's the next evolution and growth of, of chill that we can get excited about? First things first is we're getting hydrated because I've got the dry mouth from yeah, the, uh, so from the four training <laughs> me staying hydrated. But Hydro I'm, homies. So basically, I would love answering this question because for me, DNA, 420 DNA is a mixtape that goes, it's about me discovering. So DNA is the discovering of like, what did 420 mean to me coming up? Because mm-hmm. like, I've grown up now, you watch me grow up in front of the camera. A lot of you have grown up with me in front of the camera, including you guys yourselves, you know, starting, yep. I remember watching Starting Small to the page you're running now, which is awesome. And like, I'm at a point where I'm just like, my growth 
is now growing with the music and I want to kind of showcase that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I want to be able, like if you look at it, fucking two songs add up to like 90 million streams, it's yeah. right there, you know what I mean? That's my debut. And it's still in the charts for I think 160 weeks now, it's been in that 10 on the R.E. Hip Hop, whatever, but. Casual flex. DNA, casual. yeah, casual flex, <laughs> just a subtle flex. Um, The DNA, 420 DNA for me was like a mixtape I wrote while going through fatherhood and discovering myself and what 420 meant to me as I move along to my next project. So DNA I feel like is kind of like, if we're talking in a fighting sense, that's mm -hmm. this is the undercard, mm -hmm. and it's a stacked undercard. Yep. And then you've got the biggest main event in 2024 coming your way. It's, right, it's, it's Conor McGregor fighting Conor McGregor in a Conor McGregor all card. Like it's full on. It's, chill it's back ready to try. UFC yeah. 300. Yeah, yeah, yeah by chill, bro. So yeah, DNA is like. Uh, it's going to be an awesome mixtape. It's a classic rap mixtape mixed with a little bit of that new school, but I took through it back to like, you know, the, the chilling that was, I, I took it back to where we started. Yeah. And then 2024 for me is like going to be, for me, my biggest, bit longest effort I put into a project for my son, for my wife and like for my family, I'm going to give it. 420 percent mm, like real talk let's go let's talk about the bars bro you and i came up in the same era yeah. we listened to guys like benny the butcher freddie oh. gibbs you know what i mean what have you been listening to obviously park energy the first single that's mm. been influencing the new album well like yeah I, see as an artist for a while i went through a period where i wasn't listening to anything so i didn't want to get influenced mm. then i realized that as an artist you've you can't get cocky like that. You have to be a student of rap 24 hours, seven days a week. And that's not being a biter. A lot of people sometimes get confused and going, oh, this guy's, no, like, what do you think? When you're a baby, you're a sponge, you learn to talk. So as a rapper, you gotta listen to a hundred rap Suck songs to learn to rap. So like, for me, for this album, I was like listening to a lot of old school hip hop mm -hmm. and I listened to a lot of my old music yeah, because I've made so much music. I was like, okay, let's go back and let's hear what I was doing there. And I was hearing like, for example, a lot of wordplay, a lot of sick, sick wordplay but I wasn't hearing the substance in the wordplay. And I could acknowledge that with my growth. I could be like, man, this is sick. These bars are fucking crazy. Like I'm sitting there bopping, love it. Well-deserved, every prop it gets. Mm. However, I'm at the point in my life where I'm like, where's the substance that yeah, makes me what go, am I talking mm, about? I feel that, what am I saying? Yeah, I'm putting together a 16 bar scheme of soccer players, but what the fuck did it mean? Yeah, yeah, you know what real. I'm saying? And that's where I'm at with 2024. I want to combine that skill with that substance. And I think the fans have been dying for that. Like people mm -hmm. have been watching going, Blake, please, chilling it, please fucking give us that. So um, DNA is like that little run of just, here's your bars, mm -hmm. here's me showing why I'm fucking that guy. And mm -hmm. 2024 is gonna be a big, big project. Like I'm talking fucking, I'm talking a few months in the studio, locked away off the grid and just yeah, fucking putting everything into it. Yeah, that's, that's my goal. I like that ability to look back at a younger chill and what he was doing artistically. It's a blessing. What would you say to him on a personal level, bro? Man, I'd say be proud of yourself first and foremost, because sometimes like, I will acknowledge this as well, just because you have fame or you're rich or you have success doesn't mean mental health isn't something you go through. So right. sometimes it's nice to just acknowledge the fact that the Blake that sat in his garage and wrote Raindrop, Drop top, yeah. I got me goes to pass the weed and thought that might be cool. And then now gets thousands of people screaming it at him and doesn't have to say it. He has to take that time and acknowledge it to feel happy sometimes, you know That's what I mean? Cool. But at the same time, you try to go, that was in the past and let's look forward to the future. So it's about finding that balance, you know? But I would say to him, fucking mad, can't you've done well. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's what I'd probably that's say. Mad. That's mad. I'll keep it a short and sweet. Yeah. What's your favorite moment in all this, bro, in terms of like, there's the writing, there's the recording, there's the promo, the filming. What's the moment that you feel most like you? You feel most alive in this shit? Fuck, that's, that's a good question, man. Like, so when do I feel most alive or like what's my favorite moment? Yeah, a bit of both. Okay, like I feel most alive on stage. Like yeah. there's nothing, there's no better feeling than like having a crowd of people feeding off your energy and vice versa. Singing back to you? Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that is like, not even just that, just performing and seeing someone enjoying your performance, seeing yeah. someone on a shoulder going, yeah, yeah like that is just, that just there. Singing a bar and watching someone screaming the bar back at you and making that eye contact with yeah. someone like that is just fucking legendary. But however, like, my favorite moment or part is like when I was able to surprise my mom with a car, like things like mm, that. Real like shit. when you do all that shit and you do all these, so all these great things that happen, that shit's the cherry on the cake kind of thing. And that's my favorite part. My favorite part, so if I was to sum it up in a metaphor, my, like a rapper always does, yeah. my favorite part <laughs> about rapping is the cherry on the cake. Yeah, that's yeah, what, that's, that's cool. what I like the most. That's cool. We've done a bit of talk on reflecting, bro. Yeah. And a bit of an allusion to the future, what's coming branding wise, what's coming product wise. Yep. Say now your 40 year old chill, 50 year old chill looking back, what's the legacy you're looking to leave on this shit, bro? What's the footprint? Well, that's the thing, as, as I've always thought about that from the start, I've always like, and at the start it was, I just wanted to be the best rapper. It was, yeah. And then I think every person who is a rapper, 
starts off with the ambition of just going, I want to be skilled as an MC. Mm. And that was just my dream. It was just like, I think it was like my dream at the start. I was like, I just wanted a million views on something. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And now we're, and now we're past 500 million streams. Yeah. I'm, fucking, I'm fucking blowing my brain out sometimes. It's crazy. Yeah. But um, I think like the... the what was the question again? I really hot. Oh, hit me again. Go. I'm trying to remind, what was my question? Keep this in. Like, keep this part in the 40, 40 or 50 year old chill. 40, 50 back. year old chill. He would tell him to not smoke so much weed so he can remember this conversation. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I would say to just like, man, look back and like I was saying, it's like smell the roses, enjoy the path, enjoy the journey and just like try to like, try to just grow as much as I can while I can, you know what I mean? Yeah, because cool. like while I was younger, I've made mistakes. We all make mistakes. Mm-hmm. And I think that I like, you know, if I could look back at myself now, I'd just say, Fuck, keep, keep going, keep yeah. going. I don't know. I don't, I don't really know. It's a tough question. It's a hard one to answer. I don't really know. I just hope if I make it to fifty, I'm doing pretty fucking good. <laughs> the way I smoke those fucking billies. So um, yeah, bro. Seeing fifty is, uh, I'll be pleasured. I'll Talk be pleasured. to me about what I want to know now. Let, let's have some fun with it. Hit me, hit me. Who's, yeah, these are my favorite questions. Who's, who's in your dream rotation, bro? I've had a lot of time thinking about this. About if I could have a, a sesh with anyone, who would be in that room? Give me some of your names. I, I might give you some of mine as well. Okay, so like Cole would be in the room. Yep. I'd, I'd want to have Cole in the room. Mm-hmm. I'd want to have Bob Marley in the room, yeah, just standard. You got it. I'd want to have Kirk Cobain in the room, standard. Mm. I want to have Snoop Dogg in the room, standard. Yeah. And now, forgive me on forgetting his name. I just remembered it as I just said it. I want Rick Rubin in the room. Yeah. And that's a very left field name, but yeah. if you're an OG and you know your music, bro, I would want to smoke weed with Rick Rubin and go, bro. Yeah. I got goosebumps saying that. I'd be like, Rick mm. Rubin, bro, tell me shit. I'd be like, you bearded wise motherfucker, <laughs> hit that blunt and just tell me some shit. Yeah, yeah. And I reckon the whole rotation would just be like, have the blunt, just, have the blunt, just sit on do you, your thing, 21. But, um, how about, yeah, the, not, how about non-music? Anyone non-music you like? Non-music, who would I do a roto with? Fuck. John Jones? Yeah, John Jones, yeah, he'd probably pull out a bag. Yeah. <laughs> so I might have to skip on the John Jones roto. Um, oh, the Diaz twins. Yeah, that'd be hectic. 100%, that'd be cool as well. And then just... You know what I'd love to do? Like, if weed ever became recreational, like, I'd love to just host smokeouts with the fam. Like, I'd love mm. to be able to go family. Apart from the show, we're just having a smoke and a vibe and we're doing a cookout. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, the dream roto is with all of you. That's yeah, also that's the right. dream roto, too. That happens, like, happens on live all yeah, the time. Bro, yeah, <laughs> happens on live, but I'd like to do a face-to-face with yeah, the fans, real. too, bro. That's real, bro. Bro, I appreciate your time today. Good to catch up. Oh, thank good, you so much. Good to link. Pleasure. And, um... All the best for this tour, man. I'm hyped to get out there and watch you do your thing. Thank brother. you so much, bro. There's been thousands every night. And like I said, it takes hard work to do this. So I appreciate everyone who shows support. I appreciate you. The page has come up well. We've got the bongs. We've got the jacket. We've got thousands here tonight at North Coast. We've got the after party at District. We're man. living so good, my brother. Thank you for fitting this in, bro. Long I'm going to go back and get bro. some sleep and get some smoke in. So get it. 420 fam. Much love. In. My guy. That was bro, clean.